Hello, my name is Dr. Claire Owen and I'm a rheumatologist in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, and today I've been asked to speak about the importance of imaging for the diagnosis of polymyalgia rheumatica. Uh, PMR uh, is, of course, a condition that has traditionally been uh, diagnosed clinically uh, by patients' presentation with bilateral shoulder and hip uh, pain and stiffness in association with raised inflammatory markers. This has largely been due to the absence of a uh, widely available and reliable diagnostic uh, test. Over the past few decades, though, we've started to appreciate uh, PMR's distinctive pathology courtesy of imaging. We now recognise it as a condition characterised by chronic uh, musculotendinous inflammation. And it is this distribution of findings that distinguishes it from other inflammatory conditions, uh, such as rheumatoid arthritis. With that being understood, there's the possibility of utilising imaging uh, in order to help us with diagnosis. But is that really necessary in all cases? The answer from my perspective is probably not, but I think that it's particularly helpful for certain scenarios. This includes patients presenting with unusual uh, clinical features, such as normal inflammatory markers or the absence of involvement of their shoulders, those in whom you're particularly concerned about their risk of long-term glucocorticoid-related adverse events, uh, if there's any uh, possibility that the patient may have underlying large vessel giant cell arteritis, and finally, in those patients who are not responding as you would expect uh, to usual treatments. So what are the options that we have available to us? Uh, well, ultrasound, MRI, and PET-CT. So with ultrasound, uh, bilateral subacromial subdeltoid bursitis is the characteristic lesion uh, of PMR. And this has relatively good sensitivity and specificity for a PMR diagnosis. We can also see additional suggestive features that include biceps tenosynovitis, uh, trochanteric bursitis and glenohumeral synovitis. Of course, ultrasound was included as an optional criterion uh, in the 2012 provisional classification criteria uh, for PMR. The key here, though, is that diagnosis is best aided with ultrasound when you see a combination of abnormalities at both shoulders or alternatively at the shoulder and the hip. Individual findings are insufficient. And that being said, ultrasound tends to be better at discriminating uh, shoulder conditions from polymyalgia rheumatica than it is uh, polymyalgia rheumatica from other inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. And that's largely because ultrasound is limited uh, to imaging more superficial structures. If we look at MRI, uh, it is capable of detecting the same findings as ultrasound, but it does have the added advantage of being able to document uh, deeper musculotendinous inflammation. And this includes peritendinitis and myofascial inflammatory lesions. The latter uh, were described as part of uh, the Tenor study as high T2 stir signal within the affected muscle or forming a line around it. We don't know much about the uh, diagnostic capacity of myofascial inflammatory lesions yet, but we do know that if you are visualising at the pelvis involvement of multiple tendons with peritendinitis bilaterally, that this is, again, highly sensitive and specific for a diagnosis of PMR. Finally, there is PET-CT. Uh, and this really is boding as the new gold standard investigation uh, for PMR. It has the advantage of being able to document the whole body distribution of PMR's uh, pathology. And you get the added advantage of being able to exclude relevant differentials like infection or malignancy, as well as uh, checking for concomitant large vessel giant cell arteritis, uh, which in a, in a recent study uh, was found in up to 25% of new onset PMR patients. 
What are we looking for on a PET CT? Well, we see an abnormal pattern of uh, fluorodeoxyglucose uh, uptake around the shoulder and the hip joints in the interspinous regions, as well as adjacent to the ischial tuberosities uh, in the pelvis and at the posterior medial knee. Those last two findings corresponding to peritendinitis of the hamstrings themselves. In terms of diagnostic performance, like the other imaging modalities, uh, PET-CT performs best when you are combining a number of different abnormal findings. There have been a number of different scoring approaches suggested, but ultimately, if you're seeing on a PET-CT scan the presence of abnormal uptake in a periarticular distribution at the shoulders, uh, in the interspinous regions and adjacent to the ischial tuberosities, then it is extremely likely, well into the 90th centile, that you're dealing with a patient with polymyalgia rheumatica. So uh, ultimately, it would seem that uh, imaging is going to play uh, a greater role as we move forward in our diagnosis uh, of PMR. Uh, it has provided us with new learnings uh, about this condition. There are a number of other uh, things that need to be taken into account when you are ordering imaging, and these, of course, include radiation uh, cost and accessibility, uh, but ultimately, uh, we're seeing a shift in the approach to the diagnosis of PMR courtesy of imaging.